And good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar this morning. My name is Matt Myers. I'm the Assistant County Administrator for Lake County, as Alex had stated. Uh, as you can see, we have a, a number of folks here with us this morning. I'm joined with uh, Robin Grooms, the Lake County Sustainability Programs Manager, Anna Maria Kowalik, and Nick Rocker from the Illinois Energy Conservation Authority, Krista Elam, uh, the Economic Development Program Manager for Cook County, Heidi Lawton, uh, a property owner in, in Elmhurst, and Tyler Nevis, a uh, property owner in Chicago. I'm going to talk a little bit about where this program came from uh, in, and, and how it got to where it is today in Lake County. Uh, for, for the past number of years, one of Lake County's, uh, the Lake County Board's top uh, strategic goals has been to promote sustainability. The Board's been actively initiating innovative and forward-thinking programs that put our environment at the top of mind. What, what is a better way to accomplish this than by providing the economic backbone of our county, our local businesses, a financial avenue toward meeting sustainability goals that can truly make a difference? Today, the ex experts that I've mentioned uh, earlier in this uh, will weigh in on the county's Commercial Property Assessed Clean Energy Program, which is also called CPACE. The program was introduced last year and is for commercial property owners that are interested in pursuing energy efficiency, renewable energy, water conservation, electric vehicle charging, and resiliency projects for their commercial uh, buildings. By participating in the program, you could have the opportunity to reduce your building's carbon footprint that not only benefits your business, but also the entire community around you. On behalf of Lake County and our Lake County Board, we truly thank you for considering environmentally friendly alternatives. And now I'd like to introduce Robin Grooms to talk more about this county program. Thank you, Matt. Hello, everyone. My name is Robin Grooms and welcome. The Lake County CPACE program is part of a national conversation about how to make energy efficiency, renewable energy systems, and electric vehicle adoption more affordable to commercial groups. The built environment that we spend our days in, including the buildings that we live in, the systems that provide us water and electricity, and the transportation infrastructure that we use to get from place to place is the greatest source of control we have over our surroundings. With tools such as the CPACE program, the transition to a less carbon intensive built environment can be conducted more efficiently and dependably. By attending this event, you are already showing intent to make a positive change for your organization and community. So I would like to thank you for doing the hard work that comes with starting. I would now like to introduce Anna Maria Kowalik to take us away. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Anna Maria Kowalik with the Illinois Energy Conservation Authority. Uh, we are the partners with uh, Lake County in administering the CPACE program here. And I'm very proud to be here this morning and would like to thank uh, Chairman Hart, as well as all of uh, the county board uh, for taking on this initiative. And uh, uh, thank you to Matt and Robin and Alex for all of their hard work over the last few years in trying to bring this to fruition. And so we're looking for those great transactions here in this county and uh, can't wait to work with each and every one of you. So let's get started. And uh, next, Alex, what is CPACE? So CPACE uh, is an acronym for Commercial Property Assessed Clean Energy Financing. And it is a financing tool that is very unique, but has wonderful properties that allow us to uh, uh, bring those sustainability projects to the fore uh, while producing a lot of benefits for the property owner, uh, owners using this type of financing. It's a great economic development tool. It's a great business retention. Um, but what it is specifically is, a, is financing for those energy efficiency, renewable energy, water conservation, uh, electrical vehicle infra uh, charging infrastructure, as well as uh, some resiliency components. And um, uh, so it covers a wide span of uh, sustainable types of projects. And it was originally introduced to uh, take the aging building stock in this country and, and improve it building by building and, and making positive contributions to the environment, uh, as well as to the communities, as well as to 
the tenancies, the occupancies which within commercial buildings uh, to have a better experience. Uh, and, and so uh, it's such a multifold kind of a win-win uh, proposition for all parties who get involved uh, with this particular uh, product. And so in essence, CPACE is up to 100% financing of any um, energy efficiency, renewable energy, uh, water conservation component uh, thereof of any retrofit or new construction project. Like we said, it's commercial only. And so we'll be getting into what that means. But uh, please do note, uh, if there's anyone on the call today who uh, has a residence that they're looking to improve, uh, Lake County is doing wonderful things with, uh, for all of their constituents. And so there are a couple of links that Alex is going to put in the chat for you uh, that can be resources for you. Uh, unfortunately, state of Illinois legislation, and because this, this product is what it says it is, uh, property assessed. So it is a debt instrument that's repaid via the tax bill and, as a special assessment. And therefore, um, uh, it has to be legislated state by state across the U.S. and uh, then facilitated by a program administration such as the IECA uh, together with uh, the local governmental uh, authorities uh, to be able to um, uh, pick up the nuances of the state tax laws. And so for that reason, uh, it was uh, set up under the state statute for commercial properties only. So just so that there's some clarification there. Next slide. As I was saying, this is a nationwide program. So it's been enabled to date in by legislation in 38 states and Washington, DC. Uh, Program administration is uh, becoming more active. So uh, there are active programs in over 32 states to date. And since uh, the first uh, CPACE financings were closed back in 2011, uh, uh, this, this 13 year, uh, well, the 12 to 13 year program basically has generated over $5.2 billion in CPACE financings alone. So that shows uh, just a, a percentage of the greater transactions uh, and, and construction and, and uh, retrofit activity going on in the country. Uh, over 3,100 projects completed. Uh, creating approximately 65,000 uh, jobs. And this is all uh, information made available by our industry organization uh, called Pace Nation. On to the next slide. Here in Illinois, the Illinois Energy Conservation Authority, which is a 501c3 uh, nonprofit corporation, uh, is program administrator in 15 counties to date and growing. Uh, and so you see a list here of uh, where CPACE is enabled and, and of course Lake County is one of those. On to the next. So now what, what type of properties qualify? So under commercial properties, it can be any office, industrial, multifamily, five units or greater, uh, as leased facilities do qualify uh, for multifamily as commercial. Uh, retail, healthcare, hospitality, nonprofit and agricultural, although nonprofit and agricultural are sometimes considered um, uh, special use. And so uh, we highly recommend that whatever capital provider you select and are working with uh, as a commercial property owner uh, would be able to guide you on, on uh, specific qualifications. 
Project types uh, run the gamut from uh, straight equipment installation, uh, replacing HVACs, for example, uh, or putting in new windows, any kind of renovations or uh, adaptive reuse, gut rehabs, uh, or even new construction. And so uh, in the new construction scenario, CPACE is a great gap filler in that capital stack. So that uh, if you're looking for additional financing and in today's economic climate uh, where there's a lot of um, uh, volatility in the markets and, and high interest rates, uh, you can find a CPACE to be a great amenable partner in that capital stack. Uh, on to the next one. And so all of the various eligible improvements uh, run the gamut from simple lighting systems, switching to LEDs. Uh, uh, people forget about building controls. So if you have automated controls uh, governing your when the lights come on and off or when your HVAC turns on as someone walks into an empty office facility, for example, uh, all of those kinds of things are energy efficient, energy savings measures, and therefore uh, are qualifying measures. And uh, you can read the entire list here. Uh, it includes all renewable energies, uh, water use purification systems as well. Um, and uh, even to be noted, since uh, COVID took hold and uh, a lot of renovations have included air purification systems connected with HVACs. All of those kinds of measures are, are PACE eligible. Uh, some produce more savings than others, but again, you work with the program professionals to determine the extent of, uh, you know, the uh, ability to, to save and to qualify under the program. Next slide. So why would a commercial property owner decide to use CPACE? Uh, well, for one, it finances up to 100% of the eligible costs, and that's only limited by a uh, state statute that claims that uh, PACE loan to the value of the property cannot exceed 25%. And, and so we use uh, uh, appraisal uh, to to verify the value of the property, as well as uh, using as stabilized value is acceptable. Uh, this is because it is a special assessment on the tax bill that one pays, uh, it makes this non-recourse to the current property owner because uh, the, it, it stays with the tax bill and runs with the land. And therefore, uh, in the event of a sale or a worst case scenario, bankruptcy foreclosure, uh, that CPACE uh, loan stays with the property until uh, and, and passes on to the next owner uh, who receives the improved property as well as uh, is able to um, uh, it, it, they they take on only the remaining portion of the debt. And, and so uh, it, it does have a lot of benefits that way. Uh, dependent on ownership structure, it could be uh, totally tax deductible as well. Uh, and certainly it could have an off balance sheet treatment because since uh, uh, this hits uh, on the balance sheets below the line on the tax bill, it's not necessarily a loan liability. And, um, and then of course, uh, it's fixed rate and long-term. And so uh, being a, a, a fixed rate product uh, over that period of time, the only other type of uh, product out there like it is a, a mortgage or second mortgage. So it makes it a, a, a more uh, user-friendly, uh, payment uh, that uh, that can be expected at each of the uh, semi-annual billings. Uh, certainly, that helps to create positive cash flow and can boost property values. 
and uh, can be uh, dependent on the lease structures within uh, a, a multi-tenant facility, uh, be a pass through to the tenancies uh, as well, who are actually saving on utility bills as a result of the improvement on the property, uh, which helps to counterbalance uh, the fees of the uh, financing and the program. Um, and then of course, best of all, it, it helps everyone meet all of their sustainability initiatives. It helps reduce weight and uh, waste and improve everyone's experience. And so uh, there's uh, there are mostly positives to be gained. On to the next slide. And now I'm going to have uh, Nick Rocker from my team uh, come on and uh, tell us a little bit more about the process of PACE. Thanks, Nick? Anna Marie. Uh, so the important thing to remember about PACE uh, is that while it does have some, have some unique features, it is at the end of the day structured like most other types of project finance. Uh, the property owner gets uh, bids for installation from contractors uh, and also uh, obtains a, an energy audit that will um, explain or, or uh, justify the savings that uh, that will be accomplished with those improvements. Uh, and and another key part of that is that the contractor can doesn't have to be a prior existing contractor with the program. Uh, if you have an outside contractor you're working with, uh, they can register with the program, sign to sign terms and conditions of the program, and it's and it's no problem. Um, so then property owner will work with a uh, uh, capital provider. Uh, we have uh, a roster of existing capital providers that are already on board, or if there's a preferred lender that the property owner works with, they can be brought on board as well. Uh, and then the other key part of that is obtaining uh, mortgage lender consent. So uh, as Anna Maria mentioned, because this is uh, these payments are collected on the property tax bill, uh, we do require consent from any existing mortgage lenders uh, with a lien on the property uh, before the tax assessment is placed. Um, after all, all that uh, information is put together, submitted uh, as an application into our application system, uh, and this, then it's reviewed by us, the IECA, and, uh, and then approved by the county. Uh, this whole time, the IECA will, will help coordinate communication between, between all the parties as needed, help clarify any questions and work with all parties, especially the property owner, to, to get this, this project across the finish line. Uh, after the closing of PACE financing, the capital provider funds the contractors directly. Um, and then, the as Anna Marie mentioned, the payments are collected on the uh, property taxes as a, as a special assessment for the life of the loan. Uh, the key is that IECA is, is kind of always there um, working with all the parties uh, because there are a few extra involved in this case uh, to make sure that everything uh, uh, conforms with ordinances and statutes and, uh, and make sure that it just conforms with the program and and works works to move forward in uh, in a way that works for everybody. Uh, next slide, please. So, as I mentioned before, we have some capital providers uh, uh, for pace projects that are already uh, registered with the program. Uh, we also have a pretty exhaustive list on our website as well. And speaking of the website, it is kind of your one stop for all information you need to know about the program from. As I mentioned, capital providers, registered contractors. We have a great listing on there where you can search for contractors that are already registered with the program and do the kind of work that you're looking for, HVAC, solar, et cetera. Uh, next slide, please. Right, and so a few specifics. Um, the term of the loan is uh, set as a maximum, uh, set by the longest a live to measure that's part of the project. So if you are putting on a roof as part of a new project that has a useful life of 30 years, that's the maximum uh, uh, term of the loan. Even if you the project also includes some measures that maybe don't, aren't expected to have that long of a service life. Uh, as it's an open market for financing uh, for different capital providers, the interest rate 
that can be obtained is a market rate. So you can uh, shop around with different capital providers to find the right kind of loan terms that work for you. Uh, the loan size is also ex exceptionally flexible, anywhere from 50,000 up to 50. And then we're also uh, uh, restricted to a maximum pace loan to value of 25%. And by and the, the denominator of that, it can be obtained either with uh, the assessed value by the county or usually with an appraisal uh, that uh, basically determines that maximum loan size. Uh, and that and that is a requirement of a statute. That's not just a, a general capital provider underwriting requirement. Uh, and then, as I mentioned before, we also do require an energy audit. Uh, and that uh, that service is um, is a statutory requirement and can also be found. You can find contractors that will perform those energy audits on our website, along with the other list of registered professionals and installation contractors. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so, as I mentioned before, we do require uh, that mortgage lenders consent to having a PACE assessment placed on the property. And we do this for a number of reasons. It, it, is, it is somewhat unique, but it, but it is really important in the PACE process. Um, the, as, as Anna Marie mentioned, the, uh, the repayment is, the, the special assessment is treated a lot like property taxes. Uh, so... It's 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 very important that uh, a mortgage lender consents to it, um, but there's a lot uh, in it for the mortgage lender. It improves the underlying value of the property, uh, which improves the lender's collateral. Uh, a lot of times, those energy savings boost cash flow for the property, uh, which increases the ability for the lender to repay a loan. And if, as anybody mentioned, for something does go wrong, the only the delinquent portions of the pace assessment. Uh, are come due. The, the loan itself, the whole loan itself does not accelerate. Uh, next slide, please. Thanks. Uh, so to date, uh, once we got the project started, it's it's been pretty busy. Uh, we've, uh, you know, 2023, as you'll see there, is, is, a, is a little slow so far, but we actually have uh, uh, quite a few projects that are going to close in the next uh, month or two. It's going to see that bar jump to the right quite a bit. Uh, but we also have uh, closed a lot or uh, uh, approved a lot of projects that are a mixture of different types. It's not all just solar panels. Uh, it's not all just new construction. It's a lot of adaptive reuse. It's a lot of energy efficiency and resiliency measures and a lot of water conservation as well. Next slide, please. And uh, these are just a few kind of top line stats of uh, what closed pace projects have, have accomplished so far via, and these are confirmed via those energy audits that we require in terms of how many kilowatt hours of electricity all these projects are going to save when complete uh, on an annual basis. And the, the real key metrics are those bottom two, the economic benefit from creating new jobs, uh, construction, uh, also, but also the, uh, the employment of people in these uh, revitalized facilities or new construction, newly constructed facilities. And then especially that, that bottom one, the amount of uh, CO2 equivalent emissions that have been avoided by these projects is, is really something. Um, and it's, it's a big part of why, they, why this is so beneficial for everybody. Next slide, please. Sure. So to, to give you an idea of what some of those equivalencies are in terms of CO2 emissions that have been avoided, uh, these are a few examples. The big one for me, though, is always that uh, 43 rail cars worth of coal that uh, weren't burned necessarily because of these projects and the efficiencies they've achieved. So it's uh, it's really something. Next slide, please. And I, I would just add, it's important to note that those equivalencies are just on the projects uh, that, that have been transacted through our program to date. Right. So, this, isn't, this isn't nationwide, no. No, no. so this will the continue idea. to grow. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I'll just kind of run through this pretty quickly, but these are the general steps uh, for, uh, for securing PACE financing. Number one is to go to our website, to go to the project center, create an account, 
and put in your property location to confirm that it's in an eligible municipality, county. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, it's all about developing the energy project, working with your contractors and an energy auditor, securing financing, and then packaging everything up in that application and submitting it through Project Center for IECA and county approval. Next slide, please. Past that, we uh, we all uh, prepare and, and, and get doc uh, financing documents drafted for closing. Uh, the energy project is installed and funded by the capital provider, and then repayment commences on the property tax bills. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned before, uh, IECAPACE.org is, is really uh, the, the, the main resource that has rosters of capital providers, contractors, energy auditors. It contains our application system. And then also within app that application system is a lot of documentation that'll answer even further questions uh, and, and help smooth the process for all parties involved. Next. Uh, that's it for me. Anything else to add, Anna Maria? No, you can feel free to contact us at any time in regard to any questions you might have. In fact, I've noted, Alex, that a few questions have come in through the uh, chat. Uh, would you care to read them off uh, for the benefit of everyone? And uh, we'll try to answer those right now before we go to panel. Sure, we could do that. Um, so the first question we got was from Rob, and Rob's asking is, this program can be used with multifamily housing, correct? Yes, that is correct. And in fact, it pairs very well um, with HUD-funded properties. Um, and uh, it, actually, HUD Nationwide has issued a uh, uh, a memo that uh, allows for CPACE. There may be a few extra steps involved in the process, but uh, most definitely uh, multifamily, five units and greater uh, are considered commercial and do qualify under the program. Uh, Ronell, and I, I apologize if I misspeak your name, uh, but Ronell's asking, because um, it was mentioned, uh, the word appraisal was mentioned before. Ronell's asking who pays for the appraisal? And so, um, although uh, typically in order to get uh, some of these projects developed, it may have to be uh, a, an out-of-pocket expense, but it is considered a uh, soft cost uh, required uh, toward the CPACE financing. And therefore, the cost of the appraisal and an energy audit would be able to be rolled into the financing and into the amortization. Rob is asking, um, is this can this program be used in conjunction with HB 2621 property tax relief program? So I'm not specifically familiar with that specific program. However, this uh, CPACE financing does work side by side with all incentives, grants, rebates, um, uh, programs, uh, historic tax credits, for example, and, and other kinds of uh, incentive. Uh, the only um, time CPACE can't be used uh, is in conjunction with uh, the SBA loans 504. Um, and uh, uh, certainly uh, across the nation, uh, dependent on the various programs, uh, you know, there hasn't been consent with uh, Fannie and Freddie yet, but uh, we're, you know, uh, the industry is working on uh, uh, advocating uh, throughout. So next question. Yeah, Ronell's asking, um, how would uh, collection work for nonprofits if they have no property taxes? Well, they would enter into this tri-party uh, special assessment agreement that uh, Nick was referring to earlier. And uh, so th that would be in lieu of any tax bill, uh, it, it would be billed separately. And so it is uh, considered ad valorem with the tax lien, just the same. And so it, it really doesn't make any difference, but you'll have to uh, work with your uh, personal capital providers to get uh, additional information and and how that might work as well. But we them. have 
we have one more question and we'll get yes. to our next segment of the webinar. And this is from Mitchell. Mitchell's asking, uh, do the property owners get any protection from property value assessment increases due to property improvement? And so uh, the, the basic thing to know here is that uh, this process does not go through the tax assessor's office. It goes through the uh, tax collection me mechanism, uh, whether that be through the treasurer's office or however a county is set up. And, and so uh, it will not directly affect, it will not affect your neighbors. It is very pin specific to the property being improved. And so um, it, in short, no, it should not affect uh, a, a direct assessment. All right, great. That's the questions we have so far. So Thank I, think you. It's, uh, I think we can move on. Absolutely. And I would like to introduce, uh, so if you'd go to the next slide, please, uh, Alex. Um, so I'm going to introduce a panel here of a couple of property owners who have done CPACE financing here in the state of Illinois. Um, the first from DuPage County, uh, Heidi Lawton, uh, who is a realtor and who owns a uh, building in Elmhurst, Illinois, and uh, did a uh, window improvement project. Uh, and, and so we'd like to welcome her today to the panel, as well as Tyler Nevis, uh, who is uh, the owner of the historic Romova Theater on, uh, in the city of Chicago's uh, Bridgeport uh, neighborhood. And uh, the great renovation project there of an old uh, historic theater, uh, doing everything to maintain its integrity uh, and history uh, while improving the property as well. Uh, a very large project in CPACE dollars. And uh, so we'd like to welcome Tyler uh, to the table here, as well as uh, we have Krista. Elam from uh, Cook County, uh, who will be speaking to uh, her involvement also uh, with the uh, Romova Theater Project and her experience with CPACE in Cook County uh, and how it will portend very well for Lake and all of the uh, adjacent Collar counties. So uh, Robin, would you like to uh, lead the discussion? Absolutely. Hello again, everybody. Robin Groom, Sustainability Programs Manager. So I have a few questions here for our panelists. So why don't we start um, with Heidi and we can go down the line after that. So for everybody, what motivated you to seek funding for sustainable infrastructure? You are currently on mute. I apologize. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. Uh, I started, uh, I have an older building and built in the late 60s, and it was time to do the windows, most definitely. They were single pane and uh, loud. Uh, you could hear everything from the street. I'm on a busy street, North Avenue. And I was in the process of getting some bids to replace them or retrofit them. And then I heard about the PACE program and I thought, well, why not? Um, and it was surprisingly very uh, painless. It was easy. I was really surprised how easy it was to get the financing. So uh, I just decided to go with that route, even though I was one of the first in DuPage County to do this. It, uh, I was happy to participate. Heidi, you are a bit quiet. If it's possible for you to get oh. closer to the microphone for uh, your next question, I. I'm sorry. Do you need me? Do you need me to repeat that? Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, we can. We can I think it's okay. We we got it. just. Uh, I think for the next question, I think you're good right there. So. Okay. Is there a volume? Krista or Tyler, would you like to take it? 
Uh, well, I run help run the program um, on behalf of Cook County, so we don't have any specific financing to us. I'm happy to answer questions more on you know the administration side. I think Tyler would be a better fit for uh, as a property owner. Yeah, sure, happy to to help. Um, so no, we've been working on Remova for a long time. Um, it's a project that needed a lot of um, redevelopment from the start. Uh, and when, when we looked at it with Bomb Revision, our partners in the project, we realized that CPACE was a, a good natural fit, just given some of the areas that we were focusing on um, and that we were going to be doing anyway. CPACE was a natural uh, source of, of funding for us. And when the project was this large and this non-traditional, uh, we were looking for for every resource uh, you know out there that that could have worked. So it's um it's gone really well for us so far, and we're really happy that we. You know, we're working with the CPACE team and, and everybody else. It's been a, a, a very good process so far. Right. So would you guys say that this project is part of a part of a wider initiative for your organization for environmental goals? Or is this a one off project for you guys? Sure, I'll, I'll go again. I, I think this is part of a broader push for us. Um, Going in, you know, the Remova Theater was opened in 1929, closed down in 1986. Uh, we've opened it um, with about 50 different people, a bunch of uh, folks from the community, from artists, uh, you know, other folks like that. So we, we've tried to be as altruistic as possible throughout. Um, and sustainability is a really big push for our team, both from how we operate on a day-to-day -day basis, as well as if we're going to bring back this amazing sort of beacon uh, that the community remembers and, and is really going to be a part of the operation going forward. We wanted to do it as efficiently as possible, uh, which again, you know, always focusing on like values first and really the impact or lack thereof. In some cases, we wanted to make on uh, the community and the environment. It it really worked well with CPACE and the overarching objectives that uh, this this uh, initiative was looking to to support as well. So yes, something that we're going to be doing going forward and a big sort of tenant of of what our objectives are. Um, I would say from Cook County's perspective, uh, this program is, uh, you know, part of a suite of programs that we, that we um, offer to businesses and um, property owners to help us achieve our climate change goals. It's, you know, largely funded through, or it is funded through private financing and it's voluntary, but it has great potential and opportunity um, to expand. And so we do look at it as definitely part of our, our suite of initiatives to help us with our climate action. Yeah, this is Heidi again. Uh, I would definitely do this again when I have another opportunity for uh, say the roof, but uh, for now I just needed the windows done on my building, but I would definitely do it again. So for those who are in the audience who might be curious about how long it took to move through this process, could each of you speak a little bit to what the timeline was like for, for your projects? This is Heidi again. Can you hear me now? Is it better? Okay, uh, I was surprised how fast. It was nothing like a conventional loan. I think from beginning to end, it was done in about three weeks, that's it. And once I got them everything, so once I supplied them with the profit and loss and the appraisal, phase one, I think I needed to get uh, utility bills. It was no more than three weeks. I'd echo Heidi's larger sentiment. I think this is, was a, a very uh, manageable process for us. Uh, I wish we could have achieved the three weeks. I mean, that's that's great. I think our number was a little bit larger, so I understand why there might, might have been a little bit more time required. Um, but given the various sources of funding and, and the broader process, I'd say PACE is one of the more efficient and uh, easier processes for us to go through. So again, um, very user friendly, very applicant friendly, and then something I'd recommend if, if others are looking for what I would call non traditional sources for your project, especially if it's going towards uh, something that's also helping as far as environmental uh, efforts, et cetera. Krista, do you have anything to add to that, or we can we move on to our next question? Uh, yeah, I mean, I could talk about 
how we do things in Cook County, but I think, you know, the next, next question. Excellent. Okay. So for our property owners, what do you feel over the course of this process was an obstacle that you overcame and might be a good lesson to be able to pass on to the folks in our audience? I'll start. Um, I think in general, there's nothing specific to this process. Genuinely, I do think it was um, a, a very effective, very thoughtful process that we went through. I think with anything, if you're working with the county, with the state of Illinois, whether it be grants, whether it be um, just anything like that, where you're working with the government, they go above and beyond to capture the documentation in the process. It's just a, a requirement to make these things available to everyone. I would say take the time to to look at the resources that are, are going to be asked for and just a quick inventory of your documentation to make sure it's available. Um, also, I'd say there are myriad resources if you have questions, both from uh, local uh, city and, and state governments too. Um, make sure you use them. I, I can't tell you how many times I'm surprised where I have a question that's pretty simple, I know, um, but I'll pick up the phone and I can usually get to a person uh, very quickly. So just make sure you're using those avenues as well. Um, and I'd say lastly, for a project as large as ours, um, we brought on, uh, you know, resources and teams to support too. I mean, we were a 30 plus million dollar project. Um, we knew that uh, our small team wasn't going to be able to take it all on our own. So we brought on people that we knew were, were really experienced and, and drove a lot of us too. So it's all just taking a step back, looking at what you think this path is going to be like, understanding the resources that are out there and, and go into it prepared. This is Heidi again. Uh, we had no problems. Like There were really, it was smooth sailing. Uh, I think the only issue that came up was when the tax bill came out, we had to uh, work with them a little bit to make some changes that they but that wasn't anything to do with the project. So, and you have to remember that Heidi's was the second project or transaction <laughs> that was processed in the state of Illinois. And so, uh, and it was the, uh, the first in DuPage. And so oftentimes, uh, you know, there's, uh, until the county is fully onboarded and, uh, you know, everything uh, processes smoothly. Uh, it, it takes working out a kink or two, but uh, definitely the program gets there. <laughs> yeah, it was only the first tax bill that had a little issue. It was a minor issue, but that's the only problem we had with the whole process. Heidi, right? you had mentioned that you, you were able to put together the necessary paperwork for, for your application yes. pretty well. Do you have any recommendations or advice for folks in the audience for getting all of that together? It was, if you are accustomed to getting commercial financing, it's much easier. It's, it was really just getting, gathering basic information. The utility bills, I think, were the first. Mm -hmm. Profit and loss, balance sheet for two years. We had to get uh, an appraisal and a phase one. That's, that's about it. Mm -hmm. So it was very easy. And Tyler, you you had spoken that your project was about thirty million dollars, and I believe you got seven and and uh, some change for uh, through CPACE. How did your That's team right. be able to balance uh, funding through yourselves? If you got any other grants, and then through CPACE, uh, um, we I mean our our sources and uses is, is is quite interesting. And this you know I work in finance. I've worked with a bunch of different projects. Um, I think it was really just we, sorry to go big picture first, but I think we looked at what we wanted to try and accomplish. And that's where you start with your equity and who you want to be a part of the, the project. That was probably the most challenging because again, we went out to a bunch of artists, a bunch of small business owners in the community and folks like that. That was really our long pole. Um, I'd say the other pieces, we have historical tax credits uh, that we use both at federal and state level. Um, we have uh, a mortgage, we have other debt, well, we've got um, a bridge loan. We've got a bunch of different things. We've TIF money. Um, so when you stack all of those items up, they're all, you know, amazing sources. I'm really sort of proud of, of how we made this project happen. But when you look at PACE, it was one of the easier paths for us to take. But it was also probably the, the biggest no-brainer in that we were 
automatically taking a place that had been vacant and unfortunately damaged over 30 plus years, bringing it to today's standards, not trying to push the envelope a little bit. So it, it was just out there. It, it made a lot of sense. And we were excited for the program to, to be out there and for us to be one of the earlier participants. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I, so I think our, our last question is, and Heidi, you already uh, began to speak on this a little bit. Would you consider doing another CPACE project uh, with another facility one day? And do you have any other uh, final thoughts? Oh, I would absolutely do this again. And uh, I actually, um, you know, I talk about it to everyone I know that's looking to finance their projects. Um, it was a wonderful experience, but uh, I don't have anything in the immediate future, but I will soon. <laughs> Same here. I mean, I think, again, we're really excited about what we're doing at Remova. Um, and I think we're going to replicate this uh, to the extent possible as, as we continue to push this, this broader initiative to do things uh, and create uh, developments within for the community. Um, and, and see pace to be a part of it. We're, we're really happy with the decision we made and how it's going so far. Any final thoughts from you, Krista, or advice for for our mem our audience members? Uh, I would just say, honestly, I think the uh, property owners have, you know, had some really great things to say. From the county side, I would say it's, um, you know, working with IECA is great. They make it easy for us to do our job, I think. And um, I would just also stress, you know, the importance of working with your elected officials, educating them. Um, our board has been extremely supportive um, of this program, but we take, you know, we do take the time to brief them individually on every project. And so, um, you know, we, we just want to be as transparent and get the word out as much as we can. So I would say that for for the Lake County staff as well. Yeah, that, that's one point I'd echo is, in, that's that's a really good point is, especially in Cook County, definitely start local, start with your with your older person. Uh, older woman Lee has been absolutely fantastic. We educated her, you know, gave her the background on what we were doing and how. She was obviously extremely supportive. And then we made sure the mayor's office and, and the governor and everyone else were aware too. But they're gonna be your support, either directly or indirectly throughout. Um, the sooner you can bring them up to speed, I think the the more efficient this process process can go as well. So it's a it's a great recommendation, Krista. Well, and just for the audience uh, to know, uh, Lake County has been just superb from day one, uh, and uh, uh, actually, Board Chair Hart and uh, the entire board uh, have been uh, wonderful to work with and. Uh, and so uh, you you won't be uh, uh, putting your project to deaf ears. Definitely that they will uh, listen and work with you and make it happen. Thank you very much, Anna Maria. I will turn it back to you. I have finished with my questions. So Alex, uh, any additional questions uh, for the panel or for any of us? And um, actually, I'm glad you put up this last slide because I, I think it's uh, probably one of the more important slides here. If anyone has any additional questions, feel free to reach out uh, to the speakers that you've heard today because uh, everyone is very helpful. And um, uh, as you can see, uh, they support the initiative uh, intrinsically and and, and they want to uh, see you and your project succeed uh, as CPACE has helped them in, in that regard. So um, uh, take a screenshot here. Um, uh, Alex, uh, I believe this uh, session is being recorded today. You might want to speak to that. Yep. So the session is being recorded. So we will have this posted on our website and we'll send an email and a news release out to um, of the recording. So not just you, but uh, more people can have access to the great information that was shared today. And one other contact point we want to share too, Robin, who's also on a call. Um, if you ever want to talk to uh, uh, us about any uh, types of Lake County sustainability initiatives, uh, Robin's a great source of information. She loves to talk about it. I'm speaking for you, Robin, so I apologize, but uh, she's really, uh, she's truly passionate about it and is, is a great source of information. And we do have one more question. If others have questions in the next uh, couple of minutes or I guess minute or so, type in a chat. But Rob did ask, is the financing 
uh, typically fixed rate or variable rate? Oh, it's always fixed rate. Uh, now, in, in today's economic climate, you might be uh, quoted uh, a variable rate that's fixed before closing, but it definitely is a fixed rate financing uh, over a long-term period. So uh, that's one thing you can count on. Um, uh, Regan or Reagan um, asks, from a municipality standpoint, how can we promote this program to property owners and local businesses? And so from my perspective uh, in program administration, we work very closely uh, with our county partners uh, to utilize um, all of the resources possible uh, uh, using mailing lists, uh, uh, not sharing them uh, necessarily because of the proprietary nature of these lists, but uh, certainly working with their economic development groups uh, here in Lake County, Lake County partners have been wonderful in uh, supporting this initiative and helping to spread the word. Um, Krista, would you add anything uh, from a Cook County perspective? Sure. I would say, you know, um, as part of our education and working with the commissioners, we always offer to attend their events or to speak at, you know, if they've got a town hall meeting or anything like that, we, um, you know, and, and I, and I have done that a few times, um, on behalf of different commissioners, but yeah, I mean, it's basically just reminding everybody about the program and then making yourself available. And, you know, we always are, we love to talk about CPACE. Anna Maria loves to talk about CPACE. And so we just keep reminding everyone we're happy to come out to your chamber of commerce meetings or to your town hall meetings or put something in your newsletter, you know, whatever. And a lot of them take us up on that. So we're all about the education basically. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and I attend more networking events and, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and all kinds of different uh, presentation opportunities, whether it be mm -hmm. an expo table or uh, being on a panel or, uh, even um, uh, doing lunch and learns, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, whatever it takes to get the word out there. This is mm -hmm. not just on a billboard or do a TV commercial for. Um, it It's something that needs to be handled one-on-one -on -one, uh, to gain a great understanding of mm -hmm. what it's all about. And finance is a very personal thing. And so, uh, yeah. you know, we, we like to be available uh, to, uh, all of the constituents. And, and that's why we encourage you to contact us at the information that we've shared. Mm -hmm. previously. Yep. Um, well, Javi had a question about non-property owners, what they qualify and, and utilities. And I, I'll follow up with you. Uh, I'll shoot you an email because anyone that registered did provide an email address. I'll shoot you an email after. There's quite a bit. Um, there's a lot of resources out there that uh, we're happy to share and provide information on. And so I, I can follow up with you directly on that. The CPACE program is targeted more towards those commercial property owners, um, but there are a lot of um, sources of information, resources out there for people, especially that need help paying utilities and other things like that. So well, I'm happy to provide the information on that. Um, we don't have any other questions um, that have come in. We got to thank you, so which is great. Thank you uh, for sticking to the end. Is there anything else that anyone wants to add or... Um, provide information on before we head off and, and hopefully enjoy some lunch. Uh, why don't we start with our panel? Any words of wisdom to share? <laughs> well, I would like to end with saying that I believe the future is green. And so we really need to uh, uh, work hard and work together uh, to make all the good things happen and uh, and certainly uh, just know that you have organizations and you have staff and uh, uh, groups of people such as Lake County and, and their entire uh, staff and, and board to uh, help uh, get you to your goals. So uh, we're very glad to present to you today. Thank you for attending.